There are 5 advanced settings that pros often use in Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone 3 which gives them a huge advantage over others. In this video I'm gonna explain them in depth and you will never be the same person after watching this video. The first setting is left stick max settings. I've seen some people asking why pros use a lower left stick max settings. I also asked a pro who is using DualSense Edge and they were using a lower left stick max value as well. But why? The first reason is the aim assist input delay. In in either black ops or default aim assist type, movement activates three types of aim assist on target. Slow down sensitivity, auto adjust direction based on the target movement and follow the target to their movement direction. However, this behavior needs a specific input adjusted value. We have 128 steps from the center to every round area on the left stick. When we have the left stick on 0 to 99, this 128 step will be divided by 99 and the game will register every input value from the dead zone as 1.292 from the adjusted stick value. Let me explain it as if you are a 5 years old kid. If I move slower than a specific amount of speed, the aim assist won't get active activated. There needs to be a specific amount of movement to start activating the aim assist. Now we have this value of 1.292 for each step as 1% movement speed. So if I change from 128 to 100 on the left side, I'm at 21.65% of the movement speed registered in the game. This will not activate aim assist, but once I set my raw x value to 99, I start to get aim assist. And that is 22.65% of the registered movement. For 22%, the aim assist won't kick in. You can test it yourself and you'll see. But keep in mind to keep right stick dead zone on a higher value so that your aim or drift won't activate aim assist and only test left stick. Now if I change the max value to 65% in the game, we have 1.969 value for each percent. So technically, I should be able to gain aim assist faster than before. And yes, I'm getting it at value 108 raw x input. And that is 15% of the movement stick. So we improved the aim assist registered by 7%. And don't worry, you can still move slower because the default curve on the left stick is not linear. Other curves also aren't real, which we'll talk about later. But as of for now, 65% helps us to gain aim assist faster than the others. The second reason is faster response time. Typically, you need to move your left stick more to start getting a faster movement speed. It requires more time and pressure, but with a lower outer dead zone you can achieve that faster. The third reason is a manual curve. If you are like Daniel, I have a Pro Dual Sense Edge controller and I can use any curve I like. You might be mistaken because you can't get any curve you like. You can also limit the dead zone in the curve settings for edge but the issue is that's only the inner dead zone. The start curve becomes slower and delayed so that will make you slower but the in-game max settings makes you faster because you are changing the outer dead zone and also you can use curves like digital which is the only curve that makes the start faster but it still registers after 80 to 20 percent of the stick movement. There is no way you limit the range with outer dead zone. That could only be possible if we had a dead zone max on edge settings, which we don't, like what we have for L2 and R2 min and max value. So keeping the edge curve on whatever you like but changing the max settings in the game gives you the benefits of faster register, less input delay for start and faster aim assist. What is the best max value for the left stick and the best curve, Daniel? I'm not a pro and what I showed you here is based on the test I made after the latest update. I found the value 69 the best for edge combined with steady minus 5 on the left stick curve, both for faster register and faster movement and aim assist benefits. But if you are playing with dual sense because you don't have custom curve down to 65 or even 60 would work fine but i wouldn't go lower than 60 as a human reaction time won't benefit from that five value change and you may get an unstable curve for lower movements the second settings pros use is bluetooth yes you heard me right using a usb dev kit i was able to copy the data from the controller usb port and read the real-time polling rate data on the pc while the controller was connected to ps5 i realized the usb gives you a higher polling rate for DualSense Edge and it's stable on 1000 Hertz. The polling rate is the number of times controller updates data that is sent to console and in 1000 Hertz it takes 1 millisecond. It doesn't mean the controller input lag is 1 millisecond. 
the idle input delay is one millisecond but in game input lag has a lot of factors which we talked about it in the other videos in the past which you can check from this playlist in the card above now bluetooth is better what how yes only for normal controllers like a normal dual sense the idle input lag and polling rate on usb with dual sense was typically higher than 600 hertz in modern warfare 3 and warzone 3 while the usb is limited to 250 hertz so that is about a 1 to 2 milliseconds difference i know it's not huge but pros care about 1 to 2 milliseconds of course it's not enough to just plug usb you can use bt even when usb is connected if the communication method is set to bluetooth so if you use dual sense edge set that to usb and use it with a usb cable for dual sense use bluetooth now what is the best usb port on ps5 for a faster response time they all gave me the same polling rate even the top usb 2 port on ps5 and ps5 slim but you know i just like to connect it to a usb 3 it doesn't mean it's better you can use any port you like and that's a personal thing if you notice some pros use amos's black ops instead of default even though it seems they both have a similar behavior why is that this time i decided to further test it in close range in the horizontal direction to see if there is a difference between the two on value 80 with the dynamic curve at this specific distance i noticed it took more time to get out of the target amos's window size on black ops with my current sensitivity two seconds and one frame for default and 2 seconds and 19 frames for black ops the difference is 18 frames in 120 hertz mode which equals 150 milliseconds more aim assist time from position a to b so i confirm in close range based on the test i made here that the black ops is more engaged in aim assist compared to the default one in other words it's stronger and lasts longer that might be one of the reasons why pros use black ops aim assist but now i'm curious what about mid-range long range or dynamic situations where the enemy keeps changing their position which aim assist type may work better in those scenarios let me know if you'd like to see an in-depth aim assist tutorial for call of duty in the comments section currently i recommend black ops the next thing is the worst call of duty feature got reduced a while ago if you remember the reticle position when aiming was so random and out of center which would cause inaccurate results especially in long ranges after the recent update the reticle is now more stable and it starts from the same position and goes to the center very fast and after a while it starts strafing so it got much better than before and therefore you don't need to be worried about the long ranges as much as before just try to not stay in aim for a long time or you'll get that again of course this change doesn't apply to snipers the third settings pros use is dynamic curve as you know the curves in COD aren't like this we made an in-depth video proving the curves are most likely to be something like this the reason most people like dynamic is that it's faster to start with, closer to a 1 to 1 ratio and then stable with an exponential effect to the end. Linear isn't linear neither other curves so dynamic seems to be the most popular aim system right now unless you like an exponential curve but what if you change the slope scale settings i promise you that i will test it in a future video and this video is that one i now confirm with a stop scale of zero on any of these curves you'll get closer to a linear curve but sadly not a real one-to-one -one curve it still has some exponential effect and is as in at the start unfortunately in all three aim techniques so i'm going to show you a simulation if this is the default slop scale of 1 for aim curves, this is what you'll get with a slop scale of 0, probably. And I say probably because I only tested it in 4 zones. Otherwise, it'll take days to test it in depth and that'll be for another video. For now, I confirm as lower the slop scale as closer you'll get to a linear curve and the response of your stick will be faster. But most pro players use dynamic with the default slop scale or something between 0.80 to 1. What do I recommend? For the edge, I use 1 with the default curve on the right stick. If you want to use custom curves and look for a linear curve, use the linear with the slope scale on zero and that'll help a little bit to get closer to the linear curve lastly i want to show you my recommended eq settings for headphones this is my recommended mix in the game you can use tv mode if you want the loudest footstep sounds with 3d audio enabled in the console settings and this is my recommended eq for pulse elite headset this one is recommended for pulse 3d and this one is recommended for pulse explorer if you are looking for in-depth call of duty settings check this playlist from the end of the screen and if you are looking for in-depth pulse elite audio settings on ps5 check this video next